Companies Act. A special presentation by The Firm. The Companies Act 2013 is big on disclosures and Section 134 is a shining example. Compared to the 1956 Act, the 2013 Act requires many more disclosures in the board report, such as appointment and remuneration policies, explanation on every adverse remark made in the audit and the secretarial audit, inter-corporate loans and investments, related party transactions, the risk management policy, CSR policy, board performance evaluation and a separate section with a report on the performance and financial position of each subsidiary, associate and joint venture included in the consolidated financial statement. The director's responsibility statement in the board report now requires directors of a listed company to state that they have laid down adequate internal financial controls that are operating effectively. Internal financial controls have been defined widely to include policies for ensuring orderly and efficient conduct of business, safeguarding of assets and prevention and detection of fraud. The rules attempt to narrow the scope of internal financial controls by linking them to financial statements, but they are not limited to listed companies. The uh, director's responsibility statement, which uh, now extends the scope where they have to take additional responsibilities, particularly relating to internal financial controls. I think on that, uh, uh, of course, they, are, they have to rely on the audit committee to give the comfort that there are adequate uh, internal financial controls in the system. And in order to ensure further audit committee to do, they can also now take the help of external uh, agencies yeah. if required. I think the setting those systems and getting comfort every time that there are enough controls in place, not only in ensuring that uh, relating to finance, relating to business effectiveness, mm -hmm. operating effectiveness, I think there the challenges will be there as far as uh, uh, disclosing that in the, st in the uh, director's responsibility statement in my view. Okay, add it to the bit on all the subsidiary yes. disclosures that are required, Correct. which will make the the the, the director statement <laughs> the a voluminous uh, statement. Accounts. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, internal financial controls. Why is this such a sticky area? Uh, again, several reasons. One is what the law does not stipulate. I'm sure our guidance will come from the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Hopefully, is what should be the framework? Should it be the COSA framework? Should it be? the Canadian Institute's uh, guidance, should it be the uh, England and Wales Institute guidance, there are multiple frameworks. Hmm. Second is, if you, the intent was in financial controls over financial reporting, but the way the law is defined it is internal financial controls and it talks of even orderly and efficient conduct of the business. Yeah. That is too sweeping to expect both directors to be able to put that in place and uh, operating effectiveness and auditors to report thereon. So I think it's more to do with the definition and what is the import of it. And there is a third element which always one asks, and this was also uh, dis raised in the context of Sabin's Oxley, hmm. is what is, uh, is it commensurate with the benefit you're trying to derive from it? I think we should restrict it to internal control over financial reporting, ICFR, which is what is done internationally. You have to segregate them into two, on the board report and the auditor's report. To the extent of auditor's report you have dealt with in the rule to say that it is only with reference to financial reporting. You will go through the rules. We have specifically discussed it and introduced it. To the extent of board, things will settle down over a period of one or two years. But are we saying that the directors were not responsible for this? Why? I mean, I don't understand why people should be so worried about it. If directors were responsible for the conduct of the business, Mm. Now, all the directors are uh, required to say is, please state so in the director's responsibility statement. Now, because it has come in the statement, directors are saying, why don't you document it? Now, is documenting an existing control, is it such a serious issue okay. that people should get worked up? I'm, I don't agree. No, it's, it boils down to the rigor. And if you are applying a COSO framework and you get into documenting all of the controls in that way, it's a huge exercise. They have not said that in the rule. They have not said in the act. No, you have not. But that's exactly the point well, I'm making I, is what is the rigor and that needs clarity. And one more dimension, sure. Jimmy, is does this also apply to consolidated financial statements, including the auditor's report? That clarity is not there. So if you are extending yes. that dimension across the world, then 
including the auditor's reporting, that's a, a completely after different. you, I'll take yeah. a... I, I think the, the I, you know, I, I think the practical problem is if you have independent directors, particularly directors who are not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company, and they have to certify something or, or in, their, in the board report, then they would like a higher level of documentation. And that's where the challenge because comes from. where else are they yeah, going to get correct. the comfort no. from? So I, I agree. And therefore, what, what board of directors would insist on rightfully is to say, not only do you in substance say that there is an internal financial control, but how do you document it? How do you test it so that we have evidence of giving our assertion? And that's where the buildup of efforts kind of happens, which results in cost. And, and that's the question around cost versus benefit. Benefit. So, my own experience is that boards will insist on a lot more rigor, a lot more documentation and testing before they before they include this in the in the board responsibility. It leads to better governance. Better governance or more paperwork, Mr. Rao? Be honest. <laughs> it is uh, definitely better governance in my view. Because earlier it used to be a process which is to be robust enough to ensure that the internal controls are adequately in place. But today what is being expected to certify? by way of a director's responsibility statement, every item which is coming in the Vendel account and balance sheet and cash flow, in order to enter into that statement, all the processes, everything is perfect, number one. Efficiency of doing the business is also to be certified by director's responsibility statement. So that is where the problem in my view lies. How do you ensure that the business is done efficiently? There is always <laughs> a subjective view on that. Right. So for instance, if we have to place an order and a supplier, so have we followed the entire process properly or not? Have we, have we procured this item in the most efficient manner or not? Am I running my plant and machinery in the most efficient manner or not? This is well, no, 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 no. Most efficient no, no. would be auctions for no, no, all. No, no, no. And then you say, no, no, no. Are you not still doing it? Anything yeah. can be questioned. Is, is, is it not today a responsibility of the director? If the answer to that is yes, then we can't object to this. If the answer to that is no, saying no, it's not my responsibility. All that the people are saying is, please put your signature to your responsibility. If orderly and efficiently running a business was the board's responsibility, if it is not, then who else? The whole idea is stakeholders should know who is responsible. I think for a while this can create problem, it will settle down over a period of one or two years. Maybe we will dilute some of the provisions. <laughs> But I don't think this can be said, this is too much of paperwork, don't do it. No, the responsibility of the board of directors earlier was the same as that of today. Mm -hmm. But you have introduced something else to certify and give a certificate to the shareholder. They only said put your, they only said put your signature. So at that time, whoever is now made to be known that this is additionally you have to do, then he wants a comfort for which there is a compliance work, there is a cost. I agree. So That's why today, today, particularly the companies which have to incur where larger operations are there, they have to incur more. That's one Small of the companies cannot afford to So that's that. one of the reasons why they increase the sitting fee to one lakh, sir. Next week, the even more contentious issue of audit rotation. Companies Act, a special presentation by The Firm.